Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to Ticket to Life. And I am Henry. I'm actually speaking like that for the, all my listeners in the UK. <laughs> I do appreciate all of you who are listening throughout the world, but I'm trying to mention all the different countries. So if I fumble on your language, just greeting everyone, just accept me for who I am because I'm accepting you for who you are. Anyway, welcome to Ticket to Life. This is Henry. And again, thank you for tuning in. Well, great news. We are having fall temperatures here. I'm still playing fantasy football. I'm losing in fantasy football for all of those regular listeners, <laughs> but I'm still enjoying every little bit of it. But the even better news is my grandson is here. It has been a crazy two weeks. And uh, yes, I will do a podcast uh, regarding all that and being pregnant and being a grandmother and a mom uh, probably next week. It's just been a whirlwind. With uh, And by the grace of God, he is healthy. He is happy. He is fine. And I thank you all who uh, hopefully have said a little prayer here and there for us. <laughs> Maybe no one, but um, I do uh, thank you all for listening. And today's, I don't even know what got me thinking about this. How many of you have seen the movie Princess Bride? I have no idea when that movie was made. It's in the 80s sometime. And it's funny because the beginning, there's a princess and she's going to get married. And it's just funny because marriage is funny. We all know marriage is has its ups, ups and downs. And um, at the beginning, they have like this priest or bishop looking guy. And he just starts off with marriage. What is what brings us together today. Because could you imagine starting off your, your wedding with someone going, marriage? So I just had to throw that in there because I thought it was kind of funny. If you haven't seen the movie, it's hilarious. It's a classic. Make sure to see it. Um, anyway, um, I started thinking about, I guess because of all that has happened in the past two weeks with my son and my daughter-in-law and the new baby, I see the strength of their marriage. And I started thinking, they're so young. They're in their 30s. Um, and, and I think people forget how important it is, once you say, I do, to stick with that commitment. And it is. Marriage is a very, very hard job. Now, raising a child, in my opinion, is one of the hardest jobs you'll ever have in your entire life. It is not easy to raise a child. So for those of the people who think, oh, I can't wait to have a baby and get to play with them, it's hard. And and I'll talk about that in my next podcast because being a parent, again, is one of the toughest jobs you will ever have. If you are a parent or have been a parent or even the best part is being a grandparent and I'm not going to say what everybody says. Yeah, you get to play with them and spoil them. Then they get to go home. No, it's not that you get to actually enjoy that child because you're so busy trying to raise your own child and, and you don't get to experience the little wonders because you're so busy with your own child. But when you have a grandchild, it's just, uh, can't even tell you the love is just like, amazing. But back to love and marriage. There I go from one thing to the other. Love and marriage, I feel, um, is so difficult. And a lot of people go into marriage and I do have another podcast. It's an older one about, um, I do, I did, I'm done. Um, <laughs> and it is, it, marriage is very hard. And a lot of people go into marriage, believe it or not, thinking, if this doesn't work, I can get a divorce. If this doesn't work, I can find someone else. No, when you go into a marriage, you have got to go in there with one important thing. And that, of course, is love. Love, and I'm going to talk about different ways, different things I've looked up, things, different things I've done in my marriage. And one of the one things is, yeah, you got to love this person. You want to, I, I think that one of the most important things is you, you're going to be in love with this person. I mean, like you can't get enough of this person. And if, and, and the commitment 
I mean, you've got to have a really, really deep commitment for the rest of your life. But having that love and emotional and, and being emotionally attracted to this person. And I don't mean by, oh, they've got to be just so hot. No, you are emotionally attracted to who they are. They could have a third eye and you could just love this person so much because of who they are. And the commitment of saying, I do, that is, I do for the rest of my life. Now, easy for me to say now, but yes, I'm divorced. My husband's divorced and our marriages did not work out. Did we go in it with thinking, oh, well, no, if this doesn't work out, I'll just get a divorce. No, we were in that relationship with full commitment. But my first husband said he didn't want to be married anymore. His wife, it was ex-wife was too busy. Sorry about that with the telephone. Uh, his ex-wife was too busy, actually still having a single life, even though she wasn't single. Uh, she just enjoyed being with other people. And you know what I mean by that. Um, so it, sometimes it doesn't work, unfortunately, and it's not like, but I don't think that either one of us went in this marriage thinking, oh, if it doesn't work, you know, the first sight on some relationships like, yeah, it doesn't work. They start thinking, well, I remember I, I can always be a statistics and get a divorce. I didn't want to be a statistic, but I was, and that's okay. I've, I've. <laughs> I've grown up and I'm fine. I mean, if anything, I grew from going through that. But the, okay, so, okay, here are my three elements that I have read about. And one is having love. Uh, two is maturity and willingness to be responsible. And honestly, when I, that part, maturity, willingness to be responsible, that means to me, that the first big major argument, because yes, there will be arguments and guess what? That's okay. Yeah, I think it's good to argue because you can, you have to just not be hateful. I mean, some people go for the gut and yeah, really know how to hurt someone. But I think that um, when you start having these arguments, don't start talking about divorce. Well, I'm just going to divorce you. Okay, no, because one day that other person might say, okay, do it, that's fine. And you're going to be, oh, shoot, I didn't mean it. But divorce is just is an outlet. It's just that door that you can use, and it's easy to say. But the first sign of trouble, don't go to that. And um, it's, it's okay to argue. I don't, my husband and I really don't argue. I guess we've argued after almost 40 years. We have nothing else to argue about. No, I'm just kidding. We still have plenty to, but it's not worth, we don't argue. We literally can get upset with each other. And I'm the one who has to take a deep breath, walk away because I know myself and I will say something mean. Yes, all any family members that really know me know that I will just go, I will say something that is not nice. Um, I've gotten better after, after almost 40 years, but I mean, I have said things that just literally, I mean, literally just, it's like spewing something. And then I realized, oh shoot, that was really hurtful. Why did I say that? So I'm very cautious. So it's best for me to just walk away, bite my tongue and let myself calm down. But don't start talking about divorce. Just, just don't. Um, yes, if it's not going to work out, unfortunately, it's not going to work out. But you have to work really hard at a marriage, just like being a parent. Because guess what? The kids are going to grow up and they're going to leave. And then it's just you two, all where you started again, just the two of you. Now, the third thing is faith. And here's that word again that I talked about last week, faith. You have to have faith. And in my opinion, belief in God. Um. I just believe that God really sees you through a lot. And for those of you who don't believe in God, that's your business. But for me, that's what gets me. And I've said this before, gets me through each and every day. But you got to have faith in yourself, if not in God. You have to have faith in God 
and in your marriage and in your spouse to make things work because being married right now, this world is crazy. It is so crazy. I mean, wasn't I talking about war just a couple of weeks ago? And now look, look at Israel. <laughs> I'm just like, what happened with the Hamas? I'm not going to get into that because that's not what I'm going to, but anyway, so this world is just crazy, crazy, crazy. So honestly, it does take three things and it's you, your spouse and God. Have you ever ever, if you believe in God, have you ever really thought, well, why isn't, again, why am I not getting the answer I need? Well, you know what? You're, God is not like handling you like a puppet. You've got a mind, you've got a heart, use it. So it's, it's interesting for me, for people who don't have faith in God and they, all, I mean, just complain and complain and complain. So, okay, here's a story. Uh, yes, the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, so I have, we have friends and they have been married, um, let's say 12 years. And I mean, from the get go, you know, sometimes you just know, you just hope and pray, let this marriage work. And they have been separated I don't even think they've been married 12 years. But anyway, they have been separated, I bet, at least four to five times. So, yes, they have children, and they get back together. And then before you don't see them for a while, then all of a sudden, guess what? They're separated again. Then, I mean, it was like, a, it was like basically... Did they go to counseling? Yes, they went to counseling. The counseling kind of agreed with the husband on some things. Well, guess what? The wife didn't agree with that. So she said, I don't want to come anymore. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh my gosh. So unfortunately, they are getting a, a divorce. Finally, they're getting a divorce, which is kind of sad because it's not, I don't believe that they didn't work at it. I think sometimes I think people just want to get married. I don't know if that was their situation or not, but um, sometimes it just happens, unfortunately. But I, I feel like they did try to give it a go, and I hope they both find happiness. Uh, I hope they're, they're bearing they're being very cordial about it. But it's um it's a it's a hard thing. Marriage is very hard, and. Back to my belief, it's just I just believe if you have God in your life, you can probably do just about anything. You can conquer just about anything, and and they do. Believe it or not, they uh, and the problem is they do go to church. But you know, you can go to church and say, "Oh, you went to church," but to have that walk, they both see it in two different ways. Where, let me see, how do I word this without offending? Well, I guess I'm going to offend someone either way. So you, they go to church where she has just really got that word of God, but then she uses that word of God against him. Like if he messes up, well, God doesn't want blah, blah, blah. But it, and then he's like, well, yeah, but you know, I don't know. It's crazy. I don't know all the details, but I think it's kind of sad. But at the same time, I'm really kind of happy for him because they're young enough to, they need to go on with life. Now, am I agreeing with it? No, but of course, who am I? I? It's none of my business, but they ain't it my business. So anyway, I hope that they can find some happiness, find that neutral ground for, for themselves and um, for their children and just work through that. Who knows? They may become best friends because sometimes um, you're not meant to be married to a person, but you can become best friends with them. Um, the other thing is commitment. Okay, so those are my three things, you, your spouse, and God. Okay, um, I think that marriage nowadays is a lot harder um, than perhaps it used to be because it used to be, excuse me, the that um, you said I do, and, and, the, and the wife would just take care of everything. She would take care of the house, the kids, and this. Well, no, it's not like that anymore. It's just not. And... Um, some men are still expecting that, even though we're in 2023. And and you think, oh, well, it's older men. No, we're talking men that were raised in a household like that. And it's unfortunate where it, they're missing out and the wife is doing everything. And they're expect, expected of them. Um, but I feel like with commitment now, 
uh, in a marriage, you have to commit to agree to do a whole lot. This is this is like counseling 101, right? Um, I guess it's just really bothered me because I've seen so many relationships within the last few years just fall apart. And I'm not saying that they didn't try because I don't know. I, I mean, I know of some stories, but not all. But commitment is a very important thing that when you say I am committed to you, I think that is committing everything, your body, soul, everything to that individual to continue your life with that person. And responsibilities, you got to take those responsibilities of being a good person and being there for the family and being who you are in the relationship of making it, you know, or two become are get together by, and they become one, you know, like the whole wedding band thing, you become one. And next is sacrifice. Now, when I say sacrifice, that doesn't mean go and uh, kill some lamb and bring it to them or anything. It, I mean, by the sacrifice, I mean, put your phone down. Now that would be a major sacrifice for some people you think not. Or if one person wants uh, fish one night and you want uh, chicken or steak, that's a sacrifice. Or actually taking responsibility, taking and, and being able to forgive someone, that is a sacrifice. And that is kind of hard for some people or just to say, I'm sorry. I think that you, we all need to know, as I've always said, no one is perfect. No one. And I literally mean no one is perfect. There's no perfect marriage. There's no perfect children. There's no perfect wife. There's no perfect husband, blah, blah, blah. But the sacrifice to give up certain things to make your, your marriage work is definitely worth it. Because if you have an option of getting this, um, position and you're just about the money. I know we all need money, but it's like this high powered job. And that means like your, your spouse, man or woman, whoever is making, getting this position isn't, they know this is going to tear this family apart by taking this position. I'm not saying not to give it up, but that's where you compromise. You need to be able to compromise. Hey, if I take this, can, do you think you're going to be able to do that? Yeah, It's just marriage. There's just so many ways to either make it work or make it not work. I learned so much from that first marriage and I wouldn't have traded it for anything because of learning to be a little bit of a better person. I think, um, my husband still has kept me around. He hasn't left me for that Vegas showgirl. So we are doing something right. And I wish I could tell you what it is, but it, it just is. We do one of the, uh, other things we listen to each other. I interrupt a lot. I'm sure that doesn't surprise you when he's telling me a story. I'm just the type of person who interrupts people without thinking a lot. I've gotten a little bit better. I'm going to be probably 95 and still saying, I'm working on it. I'm trying to stop bothering and interrupting people. But anyway, I am trying to work. And, and when I give criticism, I try to make it constructive and I try to make it where I'm not going to hurt my husband's feelings. Not that he's like sensitive because he's far from sensitive, but, and he does the same for me because I have to ask him, what did I do? because he just doesn't want to hurt my feelings. And, but you know, my whole thing on that is if I did something, I don't want to do it again if it's upsetting you. So you have to tell me. So, you know, that's the, that's the guy thing that a lot of guys are just can't discuss what's going on. <laughs> so I did find the five A's for a marriage and it was attention, acceptance, appreciation, affection, and allowing. That's it. Five A's, attention, acceptance, appreciation, affection, and allowing. That's pretty neat. That's pretty, calm. that's, that's easy. We should all be able to do that, right? Now there's four pillars and it's the communication, trust and respect. And three is shared values and goals and continuous growth together. Now the reason I'm, I'm, talking about love and marriage is because I think it's so important right now with everything that is going on in the world. And if you do have a family, your kids need to see that you are working together to build a family of love, 
and compassion and understanding. Because you are raising your children to be the next leaders, adults, and, you, and, and they need to know this. They need to see their mom and dad as their role models, not by their jobs, not by their friends, that they have tons of friends. They need to see that family unit together. Now, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a life coach. I'm just Henry. And these are my thoughts. And this is just something important that I felt I needed to really share that I want, I would like for all of you to rethink how your relationship is at home. If you see, I know, I mean, a lot of us are really busy. I mean, I'm not really that busy, but I'm busy. Um, but with your families, getting your kids to soccer practice, getting them to football practice, getting them to um, piano, getting them to all their activities, that you don't have time to sit and just have that quality time. You know, back like in the day when families sat together and actually had meals together, even if you do that, I mean, and again, don't forget your kids are gone all day. You're at work or you're at home or doing whatever. Your kids are with someone else all day long. And they're going to meet some really nasty people. And they're going to meet some really, really nice people. Teach them how to be compassionate and understanding. But it does start in the home. And because of that, I just wanted to share what love and marriage means to me and what it because love and marriage, and you start a family, that's what continues the world to grow. So, you know, it's like that old, I don't know, probably way too old for some of you. There was a Coca-Cola commercial. No, they're not sponsoring me. No, I'm not bashing them. It was back in the day. And it's all these like races and they're all dressed differently. And they start singing about, I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. And I'd like to buy the world a Coke and keep it company. That's the real thing. I'd like to teach the world to sing a perfect harmony. And then it keeps repeating. But it's this great thing. And I think if we could all just be in harmony, you know, with the world and with each other, geez, there would be peace. But Anyway, I hope not to get sued by Coca-Cola for mentioning them, but it's a great song. They need to play this. And if, you, if you've never heard it, get on YouTube, put in um, Coca-Cola lyrics. I'd like to buy the world of Coke. It's, it's a great thing. And then it's going to be stuck in your head because it's stuck in my head right now. Uh, anyway, this is Henry. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. And I know I'm a rambling woman right now. I love you. I thank you for listening. And please go find your blessings. And if you're in a marriage, remember, that's your blessing. Work on it. And I hope that you have a happily ever after, because I believe that's true. Until next week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>